Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very highly requested video. I'm actually going to be sharing a freezer meals video. A lot of you have been asking for one of these, so I figured I would go ahead and film one finally. It has taken me a while, but here we are. I finally got one filmed for you. So all of these meals are very family friendly, but they're also low carb slash keto. I'm not gonna say they're fully keto friendly, but they're definitely very low carb options or they can be made low carb. So I'm really excited to share these ones with you guys today. If you are new here, I would love to have you over on my channel, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I share tons of cooking content. I do a new what's for dinner every Sunday, lots of crock pot meals and things like that. So if that is something that you are interested in, make sure you are subscribed. But let's go ahead and get into all of these freezer meals. For this first recipe, I'm making some meatballs with a marinara sauce and some mozzarella cheese. So I'm starting off with one pound of ground pork and one pound of ground beef. And then I'm adding in about a teaspoon and a half of salt. I think next time I will only add in one teaspoon of salt though, so that's what I would recommend. And then I'm also adding in one tablespoon of Italian seasoning. You're gonna want half a tablespoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of onion powder, and then about a tablespoon of some dried parsley. And then of course, to bind all of that together, I'm just adding in one egg. And then I'm also adding in about a quarter cup of some Parmesan cheese for some extra flavor. And then I'm just using my hands to mix all of this together. These are some great Italian meatballs with a ton of flavor in them. I should also mention that if you are not doing keto or low carb, you could definitely add some Italian breadcrumbs into this mixture and that would pair perfectly with these meatballs. And then once I have all of it mixed together, I'm just taking my cookie dough scooper. I love using this thing to scoop out meatballs. I think it works so much better and it makes them all about the same size and it just takes way less time this way. And I also don't have to touch the meat quite as much. So I usually will scoop them all out first onto my baking sheets and then I will go back and roll them up into meatballs. So you can actually go ahead and freeze the meatballs just like this once you get them all rolled up or you can go ahead and pre-bake them, which is what I decided to do on this day. These were actually all meals for my dad and I just thought it would be easier for him to have some that he could just throw in the microwave if he needed to take something to work with him or just a really quick and easy dinner. So I just threw these into a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes and they came out absolutely perfect. They had tons of flavor in them and they were really delicious. So you could just throw all of these meatballs right into a freezer gallon Ziploc if you wanted to, but I did decide to take it one step further and I did portion them out. So I added about five meatballs into each container and this made quite a few different meals so that was really great. And then I just decided to top them with some marinara sauce. I tried to get one that didn't have any extra sugar added in there. And then I also added on some mozzarella cheese and this is a really great weeknight dinner. This is a great thing to prep ahead of time for your kids as well. I know my kids really love meatballs and marinara sauce, so this is definitely a really family-friendly recipe. For this next recipe, I'm making some sausage and egg bites. This is perfect for breakfast or even if you need something quick for lunch or for dinner. So I'm just starting off with a little over a dozen eggs and just cracking them into a bowl. A lot of times when I do this, I will make just a huge batch of these and I will stick them in the freezer. And we honestly go through them pretty quickly because our whole family really enjoys them. So just go ahead and get all of your eggs cracked into your bowl.
We are going to be adding in pork here, so I didn't want to add too much salt, but I did about half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and then about half a teaspoon of some pepper. And I'm just whisking all of this together. Now, if you are not on a keto or a low carb diet, you can add in about a quarter cup of milk here, just to kind of make them a little bit fluffier. But since I was going for low carb, I didn't do that on this day. And then I'm adding in just a couple cups of spinach that I had frozen in my freezer. I'm also adding in about half a pound of some pork sausage, and then about a cup of some cheddar cheese and then I'm just gonna mix all of this together now moving over to my muffin tin I'm just spraying it with some oil so that the eggs don't stick definitely make sure that you have it sprayed really well because these will stick otherwise and then I'm just taking a measuring cup and kind of scooping this egg mixture right into my muffin tins so you can fill these pretty full you don't want them quite to the top but you definitely do want them filled up pretty good if you want a good size egg bite I bake these in a 375 degree oven for about 20 minutes just until those edges are starting to get a little bit brown. You do want them to kind of brown up on the edges. It just really helps with the texture and to make sure that the eggs are fully cooked through. Once I fully cook them, I just move them over to my cooling rack and I let them cool completely before storing them so nothing gets soggy when I put it in the freezer bag. These are honestly one of our favorite freezer breakfasts and they're also pretty healthy for you. You can add tons of different veggies in there if you want, but I just kept them pretty simple. So I'm just throwing all of these into a freezer bag and to warm them up, all you have to do is put them onto a plate and into the microwave until they are completely hot and you have a really quick and easy breakfast. Breakfast. This next recipe is a very simple freezer meal. So this is just called sausage and peppers. So for me, for the sausage here, I actually used some Polish sausage. You guys know I use this all the time in recipes. We have a ton of it in our freezer because it's venison sausage. So I'm starting off with about a pound or four lengths of this and I'm just slicing it up. So one little tip when it comes to freezer meals is to make sure that you are labeling the bag before you actually put the ingredients in or it's going to be super hard to write on the bag. So onto this bag I'm just putting the date, what the meal is, and also the directions on how to cook it. So basically you're going to want to thaw this overnight and then it will get thrown into the crock pot. But I will have all of the recipes in my description box so it will be really easy for you guys to follow along with. Now into my gallon Ziploc, I'm just adding in all of the sausage that I cut up. So like I said, this is Polish sausage, but you can definitely use whatever your family prefers. The recipe did actually call for Italian sausage, but I just know my dad really likes Polish, so that's what I used. And then I also added in two bell peppers that I had sliced up, along with one white onion that was also sliced. Now for some extra flavor, I'm adding in one can of petite diced tomatoes, as well as about a tablespoon of olive oil. I just eyeballed it. And then you're gonna want about a tablespoon of some minced garlic in there. For some extra flavor, I'm adding in about half a teaspoon of some dried basil, half a teaspoon of dried oregano. And then the recipe didn't call for it, but I did decide to add in about half a teaspoon of some salt, as well as about half a teaspoon of pepper, just for some extra flavor. And then of course I added in just a few little shakes of some red chili flakes because you got to have all of that flavor in there. And then you're just going to get all of the air out of this bag. I like to press mine flat so it stores really nice in the freezer and then it is good to go. For this next recipe, I am making some venison fajitas, which is definitely a family favorite. So I'm starting off with about two pounds of some venison steaks that I have cut into strips. And then I'm also adding in one yellow onion that's all sliced up, 
along with three bell peppers that are all sliced and ready to go. And then the recipe also calls for about a quarter cup of lemon juice. You're going to want a good amount of garlic. The recipe calls for about five garlic cloves here, but I, of course just eyeball it. And then you're gonna want three tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, which I was completely out, so I actually had to add it in later on. And then you're going to want about a tablespoon of some ground cumin, as well as about a tablespoon of some chili powder. And then for salt and pepper, you're gonna want one teaspoon of salt and then half a teaspoon of black pepper. And that is it for this recipe. I do like to kind of mix it together just a little bit just to make sure the seasonings get coated on everything. But then you're just going to lay it flat, press it out, and I will have all of the directions to store this and cook it in the description box. For this next recipe, I'm making some chicken queso tacos. I actually shared this recipe in one of my recent crock pot videos, but I had to share it here again because it's honestly one of my all-time favorites. It's a really good recipe. So I'm just starting off with one large chicken press, or you could use two smaller ones. And then I'm adding in about half a package of taco seasoning mix along with one can of Rotel tomatoes. And then here is the real hero for this crock pot meal. You're gonna want about a cup of salsa con queso. This is just gonna make this super creamy and delicious. I promise you this is one of the best taco recipes that I have ever tried. It is so, so good. So I'm just gonna mix all of this together and then I'm gonna cook it on high for about four hours. Now I will say you can actually dump all of these ingredients right into a freezer bag if you want. But I went ahead and I wanted to cook it for my dad so he could basically just take it out of the freezer and throw it in the microwave and warm it up for a really quick and easy dinner. But you can definitely just throw all of these ingredients into a freezer bag and then thaw it overnight and throw it into your crock pot that way if you prefer it like that. Once my chicken was completely cooked through, I just shredded it up and then of course again, I'm labeling my freezer bag so I don't forget what is in here. And since this chicken is already cooked, you can just take it right out of the freezer, throw it into the microwave and warm it up that way. And then to serve these, you're gonna wanna serve it with some lettuce, some sour cream, some cheese. And if you are doing the low carb diet, then definitely go ahead and do the low carb tortillas or you could also serve it with a salad and just do like a taco salad and that would be really good as well. But this is definitely one of our favorite taco recipes. All right guys, that is going to wrap up this freezer meals video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up Hit that subscribe button if you have not already. I would love to have you over on my channel for more fun recipes and other motherhood content. But that is going to wrap up today's video. I will catch you all in my next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. As a young girl, the fields were mine. We played hide and seek for hours. Raised our shadows among the pines. So offshore, playful and free, without a care.